Okay, hello everyone. So this is the pre-tutorial of what you're going to be learning in my series on how to make a top-down shooter. This is for beginners uh, and there's a few intermediate things that uh, you'll be learning in the tutorial as well. So when you first launch GameMaker Studio 2, this is the setup you'll see. What you might want to do is to make it look like GameMaker Studio 1.4 or 8.1, drag this over here. There's like docs that you can drag to different spots of the screen, which is kind of cool. Just like that. And you'll also have this control output here, and you can just drag that down, so then you have more workspace. And let's take a look at the preferences. Um, it's categorized, general preferences, uh, drag and drop, you know, all of the above. Uh, I also changed in here the syntax checking down to a hundred milliseconds so it's quicker and you don't think you have an error and then I changed the code completion delay to be later because I know most of the code I, uh, for beginners I would recommend having this sooner probably a hundred okay so there will always be a room that starts out we can just delete that we don't need that and one thing we always need to do is make sure the game is running at 60 FPS. So if you go into options, then main, and then change this game frames per second to 60, you will always need that. And then uh, also another thing you can take a look at is uh, whenever we create a sprite, you'll see we can, there's options we have here. We can do edge filtering, which is, this is basically interpolation, and groups. Uh, and this is also a collision mask, how the collision is to be set. So these groups, we can make a group, uh, and in that group we can assign multiple sprites so they all load at the same time, kind of like how in 1.4 it was texture groups, which that basically is a texture group. And you can do the same thing for backgrounds. Now you'll notice there isn't a backgrounds tab here. You have to create a sprite as a background. So I would recommend doing a group and then naming that backgrounds and putting all your backgrounds in there. It's going to be a lot easier that way. If we open up this room, you'll notice it's a lot different for the room editor. Instead of clicking the object you want over here, you have to go to resources and drag in the resources you want. Make sure it's on the instance layer. To change the background, go to backgrounds and then you can change it to a sprite or a color and you can stretch it here and tile it down here we have the views and the size of the room okay let's take a look at some basic variables we could set up I'm just gonna create a script here I'm gonna show you how all this works to define a variable a variable is basically uh, a word that holds a value so say um, there's built-in variables so health is a built-in variable for health obviously and we could say equals 100 so right now we are setting health to be 100 and we can take away from that in step events and say health minus equals and then one or something like that but one thing you really want to get in the habit of is after you define a variable or complete a function add a semicolon to end it off to break that code okay let's take a look at global variables to make a variable that can be transferred from object to object unlike regular local variables which is what we I just showed you we need to say global before it to define that it's going to be a global variable and we put a period and now we can define another variable say we want a global health system instead of saying global dot health uh, we can actually say global dot HP and make our own variable and then we could set that equal to a value as well and you can also take away from that just like I showed you before instead of typing global before every single um, variable that you assign for a global variable instead of you know saying every single time you call that variable instead of typing out global dot hp uh, we can actually define global vars so if you say global var and now you can say hp and then and that and then you could say hp equals and then 100 
or you can just say global.hp equals 100 I think nope you can't do that okay yeah so then you just say equals 100 just like that so now instead of saying global.hp we can just say HP because that's now a global variable a function is a built-in script kind of that processes information for you so the draw self function for example this means it's going to draw the sprite itself and it instead of saying draw sprite like we normally would and that's also a function basically any code you have is going to be a function uh, there's also sine functions cosine functions uh, there's lerp functions stuff like that okay um, other things you can create notes kind of note out sections of code by putting two slash marks or three slash marks and at description to define what the event is going to be about um, I would highly recommend for each object you use obj underscore whatever it is for sprites use spr uh, for tile sets you can use like ts or tl uh, usually tl is for a timeline so I would use ts for that sounds would be snd uh, paths would be pt Oops. Uh, scripts would be SCR, shaders would be SH, fonts would be FNT, timelines TL, and rooms RM. So whenever you define resources over here, always use those for uh, defining them instead of just saying player for the sprite and then you use player for the object, it won't let you do that because you already said player for one thing. Okay, I think that's basically all I wanted to show you for the pre-tutorial, just to kind of get to know GameMaker a little bit and how it works. It's very self-explanatory. It is not that difficult at all. It is very simple. And I think that's all you need to know for the tutorials. So uh, those will be out soon, I promise you. And there's going to be maybe seven or eight videos, and each of them are about 20 minutes long. So if you follow with it, You'll get to know a lot about Game Maker and you'll probably be able to make your own game. So thank you guys for watching and stay tuned for those tutorials.